Welcome to the M3302 course on differential calculus and Banach spaces. Okay, what do we start? What shall we study in this course? Okay, let us start with what you already know. If you remember, in calculus, we usually study properties. Relate. We define first the concept of a of a differentiable function and the notion of the derivative of a function if it exists. And then we prove several results uh, or rules for derivation. So, for example, we have the sum rule, the derivative of a sum, the derivative of a product, the derivative of the inverse, inverse in the sense of 1 over, the chain rule, the mean value theorem. Uh, we also relate... Uh, the existence of local maxima and minima to so if we want to search for a local maximum or minimum we search first for critical points so a critical point is a point where the derivative vanishes okay so if f has a local minimum or maximum at some point x0 and f is differentiable of course then its derivative much must vanish at this point so we have a horizontal tangent as you know okay so this is a very important uh Inter geometric inter this geometric interpretation of the derivative as the slope of a tangent is really a, a very important idea in mathematics and we shall uh, exploit it in this course okay so because locally uh, if f is differentiable at a point then its graph may be approximated locally by its tangent okay so this idea is very important and conversely if at zero is critical point and the second derivative is non-negative, then we have a local maximum, a local minimum, excuse me. And if f double prime is less or equal than zero, then we have a local maximum. Okay, so the sign of the derivative uh, is very important here and it's related to the very important notion of convexity of a function that we shall talk about and shall review. And there is a very important theorem which states that if f prime, if the derivative of a function vanishes on some interval, then f is constant on that interval. This, this is important, and I stated explicitly the assumptions that you have to work on an interval. Okay, because as we shall see now, we will have to generalize all this to a broader context. So we have to generalize the notion of an interval as well in this. So we'll get back to this. Because if you don't assume that it's an interval, the result is wrong. And I will give you an example later. And we have, maybe you learned three forms of the Taylor formula. So we have taylor Young, taylor Lagrange, and Taylor with an integral remainder. So, the, but the idea is the same. It's, it's, it involves the approximation of a function locally, a smooth function, because it has to have enough derivatives. So... It involves the approximation of a smooth function by polynomials locally, at least, okay, plus a remainder. So the remainder could have several forms, okay? And we shall get back to this. If you, if you didn't study this, don't worry, because we'll get back to this in a more general context. Okay, and maybe you heard about the inverse function theorem. I don't know that if f, if g is differentiable and uh, at and and at some point, x0 x is not a critical point, so g prime does not vanish at 0. Then, locally, near x0, g, g is bijective, so it possesses an inverse. And the derivative of the inverse is the inverse of the derivative, in some sense. Okay, if you didn't encounter this, don't worry. We shall prove it in a more general context. And there is another relate, strongly related result called the implicit function theorem. It's very easy to state. If we have two real variables, x and y, related by a relation of this form f of x, y equals 0, for example, x squared plus y squared minus 1 equals 0, or x squared minus plus y cubed equals uh, 0 or something. So uh, the problem is, can we solve y in terms of x, or x in terms of y, at least locally? Uh, we need to... It's important to, we cannot solve in general y in terms of x globally, because, <clears throat> for example, if you take the circle, the circle is not the graph of a function. 
So you cannot solve y in terms of x if you take x squared plus y squared minus 1 equals 0, the equation of a circle. We cannot solve y in terms of x globally, but we can do that locally. Okay, on pieces, uh, on some pieces of the circle, we can write y in terms of x or x in terms of y. And here's the result. It's very easy to state. If the partial derivative with respect to y of f is not zero, does not vanish at, the, at some point, x0, zero, y0, zero, then locally, y is the graph, is, the, is a function of x, uh, is a smooth function of f. Okay? So the function phi inherits the smoothness of f. So it's very easy to state. And of course, we can interchange the role of x and y here. So if the derivative with respect to x is not zero, then x would be a function of y. Now, uh, don't worry if you didn't encounter uh, these two important theorems, because uh, our target is to extend all these results to a general context that I shall explain now. Okay, now functions of uh, one real vari variable are not usually enough. For example, a physicist may be interested in the temperature of some object, but the temperature may vary from location to location or from time to time and may depend on other factors. So the temperature may be a function of several variables. Okay, So for example, three spatial variables and time. So four variables, and there may have, they may have other variables as well. So this is an example of what we call a scalar field, because the temperature is a scalar. Okay, so here we have an example of a function of at least four variables. And if you consider, for example, <clears throat> a physicist may be interested in uh, the velocity of the fluid, and here once again we have the fluid may depend may vary in, in location and time. So we have at least four variables, but it has three components because the velocity is a vector. So now this is what we, this is an example of what we call a vector field. Okay, so mathematicians would study all these particular cases by studying functions of n variables with m components, and such functions are called vector fields as well. Okay, by analogy to the physical examples. Maybe you start. You already started studying such functions, and we, we will see actually if we if we want, if we generalize the concept of a derivative because it's not clear here actually. If you want to extend the previous results, we first want need to start by uh, with defining the notion of a derivative. What is the total derivative of a function from R n to R m? It's not clear. Maybe we can define the notion of partial derivatives, but what is the total derivative? Is there an analog concept of a total derivative? And is it possible to extend all these results to this case? It's not, it's not trivial at all. And if you do this for, for vector fields, you will encounter that many things will still hold in a still more general context, the context of normal spaces. So instead of working with maps, between finite dimensional spaces, we can work with maps between infinite dimensional normal spaces. So we can push the generalization further, actually, and consider maps between normal spaces. And this is precisely the, con the, the purpose of this course, is to first define the notion of a derivative or differential or, uh, yeah, it's called differential sometimes, but it's also known as the Frechet derivative because there are, there are several ways to define the notion of a derivative, as you shall see. But we shall concentrate mainly on the Frechet derivative. So first we have to define the notion of a derivative, and then we will have to extend all these results that I stated before to this more general context. Okay? And I must end by saying that this course is really fundamental in all modern mathematical analysis, because in, mathematical anal in modern mathematical analysis, we consider operators or maps between infinite dimensional spaces, which are usually spaces of functions. Okay? So uh, we need this uh, to work with the notion of a derivative and all the results that are related to it. And it's also uh, very fundamental in differential geometry, as you shall see, uh, because <clears throat> uh, we, in geometry, we'll extend still this notion of derivative 
to function between what we call manifolds instead of working from Rn to Rm, you, which are considered as flat spaces, you may work uh, with functions or maps between manifolds. Manifolds are generalization of surfaces and curves to higher dimensions. Okay, so you will consider maps from an n-dimensional manifold to an m-dimensional manifold, and many things. Will <clears throat> okay, so this is just to give you a motivation and an idea of what we shall do in this course. And here's the plan. So we'll start with a preliminary chapter, as usual, on norm spaces, so mainly a review. But I will uh, introduce some new results. Uh, the second chapter is devoted to the definition of the concept of differentiability uh, for maps between Banach spaces or norm spaces. Uh, chapter three will be devoted to an extension of, to the, of the mean value theorem to this context. Uh, and chapter four is devoted to defining higher order derivatives or higher order differentials and Taylor's formulas. And the last chapter is devoted to the inverse function theorem and the implicit function theorem. And these two are related, as you shall see, because one can be deduced from the other. So in some sense, they are equivalent. And let me tell you that in most, uh, in a big part of these theorems that we shall extend, we need to work between Banach spaces. So we need the assumption of completeness. Okay. Uh, so most of the time we will be we will work in Banach spaces rather than just norm spaces. Okay. But some results are, are, are still true if even if the spaces are not complete. Okay. So and yeah, so I, I will just give you two references. Uh, it's the famous book by Henri Cartan, Cours de Calcul Différentiel, uh, and it's available in English as well. It's a classic book, I studied in it. And there's a more recent book by Dominique Azé, Calcul Différentiel, Equation Différentiel. And I think you may, you may find a PDF version on it, of it as lecture notes on the internet. So this concludes this short introduction to the course. And in the next video, I will start with chapter one uh, about review of Banach spaces. Okay, so thank you for your attention and see you soon.